Hi, I'm Aaron from Hodgins Harvest, and I'm going to run through a few tips for having success with our Grow Your Own Kits. Uh, these are a few grow kits at different stages. These ones are either ready to harvest or close to ready to harvest. These are sort of the pinning or, or intermediary phases, and this is presumably what you, you're starting with right now. So when you first open your kit, you're going to have directions. Uh, you're going to have a, a misting bottle that you use to keep it moist, and uh, you may have a humidity dome. So the humidity dome, we're only going to include these in the winter, and that's because the number one problem people have with these kits is when you're trying to grow them in your house in a cold climate in the middle of the winter, the air is really dry in your house, and that's an unnatural environment to be growing mushrooms in. So the humidity dome will help with that that issue and if you live in the desert and it's and it's dry year round these will also be helpful but if you're watching this video in the spring or summer and you didn't get one of these that's why because the the normal relative humidity is high enough so that you don't really need one of these to grow mushrooms uh, so after you get the box opened up I would recommend closing the top of the box back up if there's a lot of light and a lot of air getting in here, it could cause the mushrooms to start pinning and trying to grow in the top of the bag here. And that could take energy away from where you want them to grow. So uh, I'm gonna take the top of this box back up. I'm using clear tape so you can really appreciate the Hodgins Harvest logo on top there. Uh, and then as it says right on the front of here, you're gonna wanna just pop this out of here. So there's a little finger hole. This should come off relatively easy, it might stick a little. And what you have there is your block of mycelium underneath. Uh, so you're gonna wanna take a clean knife or razor blade to cut a hole in this. If you have a razor blade or even a knife, it's fine to stick the tip of the knife down into the block. It actually cuts open the mycelium a little bit and the mycelium will kind of rush energy to that area to heal it up and it, and it can actually help. You don't want to stick a knife halfway through the block, but it's fine as you cut to just go all the way in like that and cut the cut the actual block itself too. And if a little bit falls out, that's fine too. Don't worry about it. The humidity dome is pretty straightforward. It just pops on the front there uh, and you're just going to mist it through like this. And so the key through, throughout the beginning stage of this, so you missed a few in there. Uh, you get some water droplets in there and the key is that to kind of have the inside of this humidity dome have some water droplets on it uh, and when these have dried out uh, you want to spray it again so if the air is really dry in your house that could be four times a day um, if the air is not really dry that could be two times a day maybe one time a day um, if you forget one and you work late it's not the end of the world if you come home and it's dry but you want to stay on top of keeping this moist but not soaking wet. That's the key. Um, if you go in here and just keep spraying and spraying and spraying and spraying and there's excessive water in there and it's constantly uh, wet in there, it can lead to bacterial growth. So it's about finding the Goldilocks zone of, of not too moist and not too, too dry. So I've got this lion's mane kit here and this is also just in case you are watching this in the spring and summer and you didn't get a humidity dump. Um, so same idea, we're popping that off, we're cutting an X, it's fine to cut into the substrate a little. And when you're spraying one of these blocks with the humidity dome, you're just going to spray right in the humidity dome and that kind of keeps the water in for you. But if you don't have one of those, just pull these back, at least get like three of them out of the way. And uh, to start, you can spray uh, right on the substrate to get it nice and wet and then put the flaps back into place because that'll hold the moisture in while also letting air out. You're going to keep it moist in here and you're basically going to leave this humidity dome on until you start to see pins or little baby mushrooms forming in here. You want to avoid obviously mushrooms growing out and coming into contact and getting stuck on this humidity dome but pretty much when they're when they've just kind of come out and there's still a little bit of airspace in there you can just take the humidity dome off and grow the mushrooms out the rest of the way and save this for uh, your second and third flushes. So you wanna leave these kits uh, in a place where they get a little bit of light. Contrary to popular belief, uh, mushrooms do need light to grow. They just don't use it the way that plants do. Um, they need a little bit of light uh, to know which direction is up, but you don't want these to be in direct sunlight. So if you're just in your kitchen in a shady corner, that's a good place to put it in terms of light. 
Um, you can read the directions for the temperatures. Pink oysters like it a little warmer. Uh, Lion's mane and uh, our oyster kit can be in temperatures that are uh, a little on the cooler side, down to the 50s if you want, and they'll still grow. Uh, generally, mushrooms will grow faster at higher temps, but they'll get sort of stretched out uh, and won't have as dense a texture, which is, is usually a nice texture for eating. Um, and so when it's colder, they'll grow a little bit denser and have a nicer texture um, for cooking, but they uh, grow slower. So you gotta wait a little bit longer. Uh, so I just started this kit. This is a pig oyster kit. Um, this oyster and this lion's mane I started uh, about a week ago. Um, lion's mane is the slowest of the three to grow. So this is kind of the pinning stage of lion's mane. You get this sort of white foam that starts. This is what oysters look like when they're pinning. They start off like these tiny little pins like this and then they and then they get bigger and very quickly like it'll turn into looking like that within a couple days, maybe not even. One of the key things when you're misting them when they get to this stage, when they're in the pinning stage, is you really don't want to get right up next to them like this and spray so that they're getting super, super wet. Because if there's sitting water on the surface of the mushrooms, whether it's oyster or lion's mane, that can lead to bacterial contamination. So once, when it's at the very beginning, just get it nice and wet. When they get to the pinning stage right here, you wanna hold the mister back a little and just kind of do this. So once they've, once they've reached this stage, the real vulnerable stage to drying out is when it first starts and the bigger they get, uh, the more resistant they are to low humidity. So with these lines made, I would just do sort of a spray from back here a few times a day and just don't get right in there and spray a bunch of water on it. All right, so if you are in a cold climate or in a really dry climate and you have a humidifier, it's a good idea to just have your humidifier near the kit. Uh, you don't have to have it hitting it directly with, with the mist, but just sort of in the area like this um, if you maintain uh, relative humidity, 50, 55, 60% around the area of the kit, that's the best conditions to grow them in. It's totally possible to, to grow them without one um, in, a, in a cold or dry climate, especially with the humidity dome, or even without it if you have to, uh, but this can be helpful. All right, so as far as when to harvest, um, I'll go right down the line here. Um, there's a pretty big range with lion's mane for when you can harvest it. It's the slowest to grow. It'll take longer than the oyster varieties. Uh, this one right here, if you get a close up of it, uh, it's got pretty long hairs on it. This is honestly about two or three days past the stage where I would usually harvest it, uh, but it's totally fine to harvest it at this stage. When the hairs are about a quarter inch long on it, uh, that's probably the best time to harvest it because it stopped growing in terms of the size. Uh, and so you're not going to get a lot more mass out of it, um, but it's still it's still kind of young and tender. Uh, if you let this go until it's got a really long beard hanging down, it actually will get a bitter taste to it. So you don't want to let it go for a really long time. Uh, with the oyster mushrooms, this one is is actually about a day away from being uh, at the ideal stage to harvest. I'll insert a picture here of this block tomorrow. These pink oysters are pretty much ready to harvest right now. I could probably leave them another day. Uh, the key with pink oysters is they'll have this dark, brilliant pink color, and it, when they start to lose that color, that means they're on their way out and harvest them immediately if you see them start to, to lighten up a lot. Uh, what you should do is, when you harvest, is just pull the entire clump off the block. Um, don't try to pick just the big oyster mushrooms and save the little ones and let them grow. Just pull everything off the block. So I'll, I'll harvest this lion's mane. I'm just gonna pull the whole thing off. Uh, and when you have all this little stuff left over here, pull any of the stuff off that's loose that you can. And especially this stuff right here, any little pieces of white that are hanging on, take it all off until you get back down to bare substrate. And that's where you can just start misting again, just like we started the kit in the first place. And you'll get a second flush out of it. Uh, I'm gonna leave these oyster mushrooms on here but I'll also harvest the pink oysters. Uh, I usually actually with oysters, I'll put my hand at the bottom of the clump and kind of pull up. And that seems to kind of rip them off pretty cleanly. And you want to trim all that substrate off obviously before you eat it. So get all this off, back down to bare substrate. And then you can put your humidity dome back on if you have it or just start misting it again.
Uh, we guarantee you'll get at least one flush. So if you didn't have that first growth, uh, send us a picture and we'll try and diagnose the problem and make sure you get at least one flush for sure. And everything past that is sort of a bonus, but normally if you take care of the kit, you can get two, three, four, some people have even gotten five flushes out of, out of these kits. Um, so that's your second flush, you just do the same thing, start over, right? So after your second one grows off that side, one thing that I like to do that we do with blocks on the farm sometimes is uh, cut a new side open. Um, so you're gonna wanna open the bag back up, tape over the existing hole. So this is after my second flush. Say I just harvested the second off of this. And what we're gonna do is seal that hole off from oxygen getting in there, and then flip the block around to the other side that hasn't been cut. And you can put it back in the box and tape the box back up and cut a new hole on the other side of the block. And sometimes that'll allow for a little more vigorous growth than if you were to go for a third flush from that same spot. So once you have your, your mushrooms harvested, uh, if you're unfamiliar with how to cook with them, head to HodginsHarvest.com. Uh, we have a recipe blog there. You can also scan the QR code on the front of the directions. Uh, and my best advice to you is to cook them crispy.